Okay, first uh, let's uh, install the environment on uh, Windows Server or on your Windows host. You can do it by yourself. Here, install web code and a bird suite or zap, and uh, we will use zap, not a uh, burp suite. So, we will see here. Scroll down on Windows. First, we need to install Java, Java JDK, then, we download a uh, web code and uh, web wolf. Here, it shows you how to run it, then, we install zap. Or Burp Suite, and we'll install uh, both. We right click, download the Zoom, Builds, or Open JDK, choose the version suitable to your machine here. Our Windows uh, Server 2019, we use uh, Java 11 LTS. Long Term support option. Operating system, you can see uh, here, choose Windows. Architecture is uh, 64 bit. And JDK, now you will see only one left. We will choose this uh, installation package, not this uh, zip file. So I'll download this one. I will save the under uh, 250 this folder. Okay, the download completed. Showing folder here. See this uh, Zulu. Java JDK. So I chose the default folder. Once it's done, we are going to download the web goat and web wolf. Open this link. Here the version is 8.0, 8.1.0. Okay, now my JDK is installed. Here, follow this uh, guide. Check the environment available path contains the JDK bin folder. So we can right click this start menu. Oops. In this search box, we type environment. Here you see uh, add the system environment variables. At this part, edit variables. Here you can check this path here. You see this program files Zulu, Zulu 11, and bin. That is uh, included in this uh, path system variables. Here, system variable. Okay, it's uh, inside there. Now, check the JDK installed successfully. Open a terminal window or command prompt here. Command prompt. Run these two command. Java C version. You see it show up. Java version. Show up, which means the JDK is installed successfully. 
in some case you may to you may need, need to add one more system variables called Java home to hold the location where you installed this is Zulu Java JDK here now we install and this place right here is the JDK Java home can you see copy this one just use this copy type environment variable can add this one. This one is not required. Please make sure you add it in this list. System variables. New one and create Java Home. This is not required. What is Java Home? Click OK. OK, that's it. We complete this part. Now we are going to do the second part. You can see on Windows, on your Windows Server, or on your Windows 10, your host of Windows, it does not matter. Scroll down to find these two, WebGoat Server and uh, WebWolf. Server link has and these tools. Okay, the two program needed we downloaded. Now check from here how to run WebGoat and WebWolf. First, we open a command prompt, then cd into the folder where these two program resides, and run these two command line. We need two terminal window or two command prompt. After that we can access this web goat and this web wolf in our browser. So I, I need to open two command prompt. Okay the, this this one I would like to use it to run let's say this one to make the clear, you can change the title. Say so this is a web goat. Here you see web goat pops up. Now we need to cd to the folder we saved those two programs here, right? 250 so uh, where well, I saved in this case I need to check the downloads and see show in folder okay I saved on this TCP view so this is not the right place I need to uh, put it in the right place here. These two control X create a new folder to hold it. Let's create a web. Can we paste it here? Now we copy this uh, location. Come here, CD, right click, paste here. You use DRR, you see this. Uh, web go to server is here right now you can run this command line here you can specify the port number and the server address if you don't specify these two parameters by default these are the default uh, values the program will ban on the localhost on this port number 8080 for this uh, web go 
uh, web code and copy it come here oops I didn't uh, copy the whole thing now you press under it will run this uh, web code it's an uh, environment intentionally designed to be vulnerable so we can practice web attacks now the wait until it uh, says uh, it complete now for the second one we change the title this one web wolf here you see web wolf here cd to this location there are you see this uh, web wolf is here so now we run that program java dash d file Encoding EXOTF dash eight and followed by this uh, web wolf. Here it says it cannot find that one, so the main class I miss the parameter dash jar. Okay, now this is also running. You may just copy from here, right? Dash job, copy this part. By default, its port number is uh, 9090. Okay, now the web goat is up here. You see the web goat is, uh, is, uh, is up. Now you can access that web goat. Right click, go to. Here you see it pops up. Right, this web code pops up. Choose a username, use your first name. Here, I just use instructor. Password. Here, you set a password by yourself. So, we need to register new user first. Username. Instructor password. Then you accept the term of use. Sign up. Okay, now you see so what's a sign in. Here, these are the lessons we are going to learn today and uh, this is Thursday. For example, injection can see the SQL injection from introduction, advanced mitigation, and so on. cross site scripting. So today we will practice those lessons. You will you are not going to do this Thursday. Okay, now for the second one, the web wolf. So don't close these two command prompt. Here you see this web wolf is already uh, up, so we can also access this web wolf. For this web wolf, it uh, uses the credential you registered on web code. For example, on web code, my username is instructor, so you use the same password. And sign in. So here we come into a web wolf. Here web wolf is for for you, the attacker. It helps you while solving some of the assignments and the challenges within web code. And an assignment might be uh, might for example require you to serve a file. 
or connect back to your own environment or to receive an email. So in what to not let your drawn web go open and connect to the internet. The team provided by this web wolf they provide these tools in this application called web web wolf. For example, files you can host a upload a file and host here. Mailbox and receive some uh, emails, incoming requests, and so on. So we will practice today and uh, this uh, Thursday inside this web goat and this uh, web wolf. So you see on the Windows side, we are done. That part now we are going to install the Zap and this Burp suite. They are HTTP proxy server. So we will learn soon what are they. Here, this is uh, a Wasp Zap. Download now. Here, what this uh, program? It's a tag proxy. The world's most uh, widely used web app scanner, free open source, actively maintained by a dedicated international team of volunteers. So we download this uh, Windows 64-bit installer. We saved under this uh, web. Okay, it's done. Not complete. This one is optional. The burp suite. Their uses is are similar, and uh, in our lab and uh, class we, we are only using ZEP. So here I just show you this uh, burp suite. Here, burp suite community edition is a feature limited set of many tools for exploring web security, proxy your HTTPS traffic, edit uh, repeat requests decode data and more. Get the latest version here. Download the latest version. Here, Windows 64 bit. Save the at the same place. Well, the installation is quite straightforward. You just double click and install them with all default options. Here, the app. Accept the agreement standard standard installation. Okay, it's installed. Just like you install other popular software. Burp switch. That zap, or wasp zap, show up here. Choose the default location. I just choose all default options.
Okay, it's done. Now we complete all the installations. We set up the web attack environment on Windows. And you can see you may install this environment on your Windows Server 2019 or just uh, on your Windows host. Now I will go to uh, Linux. Here, please pay attention to the all, which means uh, it's just uh, op another option for you. First, I um, want to install Java JDK. We right click on this desktop, open a uh, terminal. Here, we type cd, go to the home folder. You can also open this uh, home folder to see inside your document and add it to 50 you can also create a folder quit uh, tools but on uh, Linux I would like to install the program in a different place here first install the Java JDK Yes. You see the procedure, they are similar. Check the Java JDK installed successfully, then download the web goat and the web wolf. You see the execution are identical to Windows, right? Access them from your web browser. Here another option you may using you may use Docker for web goat and web wolf. I will not uh, demonstrate this part for those students who are interested. Interested, then you may uh, follow these steps to use Docker for web code and web wolf. Then we will install Zap or Bob Suite. Here is the procedure: how to install Zap and uh, how to install Bob Suite. Okay, when it's installing, we may have a look on those concepts we are going to learn today.
here are the topics we are going to learn today. Okay, the installation completed. Now we check Java JDK installed successfully. Version, you see, it pops up. Right, everything looks good. Now we download this uh, stable version of WebGoat Server and WebWolf. Scroll down, you download the same file. They are written in Java, so you can run everywhere. As long as you have installed the Java runtime environment. Here, I will save another tools. And this is a web wolf. Next step, we can run these two programs. First, cd into the folder where you saved those two files. I saved and hit this place, right? Click this uh, here, this uh, M place. Then press Ctrl L. Right click, copy. Come here, CD to this place. You can use LS. You see these two pro programs are saved here. Now you can run Java dash D file encoding equals UTF dash eight dash jar followed by the web goat right, this is the first one here you can insert the file open a new tab in this new tab you see it is open at the same place so you can type Java dash D file encoding equals UTF dash eight dash jar followed by that web wolf. Here this uh, web code is on. Now we can access them from our web browser. This is a web code. Right, you see it pops up login page. Again, we need to uh, register a new user because we just installed in Ubuntu as a new environment. First time, use your first name. Here, password. Agree with the terms and uh, conditions. Sign up. Okay, you see identical interface, user fa uh, user interface. The web wolf. Please pay attention. If you use a different port number, you need to make sure this two port number match. 8080, 8080. Here, oops, here I didn't change it. This should be 9090. By default, it's 9090. If you choose 8080, then it will conflict with this one. 
So you need to choose the same port number. In my execution, I didn't specify the port number, so by default, it would be 9090 for this uh, web wolf. So you see, web wolf is here. You see this uh, URL 9090 here, the port number. Here's the port number 8080. Okay, now you see the identical to the Windows. This is on Linux. Next, we want to install the ZAP and uh, the Bob Suite. Yeah, go to this app, download now. Now we need to choose Linux installer. Here yeah, there's a Linux installer. I would like to choose this uh, Linux uh, package. Yeah, download this package. Save it. Oops, I didn't choose save as. Now I need to go to that uh, download folder. You can see it's uh, downloaded here, this app. Right? You can use Ctrl X. Go back to the folder I created today. 250 tools, Ctrl V, paste it here. This is the app. I also download this uh, Bob Switch. Here, yeah, download the load latest version. Now Linux 64 bit. Download. Save it. Again, it's downloaded in that uh, download folder by default. See it's downloaded here. Control X Tools Control V paste here. Okay, now I have these two uh, programs. How do I install it? Follow these instructions. In the terminal window, actually for quick access, you just right click. Inside this folder, open in terminal. Now follow these uh, commands. First, check that uh, opt folder exists. You see it does not exist. In this case, we need to uh, sudo make dir opt make a folder. Now you will check it again, you will see the folder is created. Now we change the owner of this folder to yourself, to the login user. Here, yeah, copy it instead of the root. Oops. If you check it again, here you see the change to the owner. The owner is changed to uh, to myself. Now we cd to the folder where zap resides. We know it's uh, is this place. The zap is here. So then we extract it. Zxf. This is extracted here. Now we can use a move. 
this folder to the folder OPT we just created. Then you can uh, use LS to find zap here. You see the zap is here, zap.sh. Now you can run it, type OPT zap zap.sh. Okay, this is uh, the tap when you run it, what it looks like. Port number, it says 8080 was used because it uh, was used by this uh, web goat. So you may choose a different one. Uh, choose yes. Here. And we will learn later. Yeah, this is a tap. There are some uh, add-ons, lots of add-ons. You can choose them and uh, install them. You can also update all these uh, modules or add-ons. Okay, this is uh, a Wasp tap. When you run it on Windows, you will see the same interface. Uh, close it. Now for the second one, the burp suite, I already done these steps, step 1, step 2, so I only need to go to this step, step 3. First uh, we need to make it executable, plus x, burp suite, then we run it. This is the installation program. It will Install it. Here, follow this uh, installation. Install into this default place, OPT, Burps Suite Community. Choose the default options. We don't want to click uh, sim links. Okay, it finished. Now we can run it like this. First, you may try to find it. Burp suite, here you see the Burp suite community is there. Now you can run it. Opt. Burp suite, Burp suite community. Here, this is what it looks like. Temporary project, then you need to create some project and go use Bob default. Okay, this is what it looks like the Bob Suite Community Edition. And let's close it. Okay, we installed uh, all the tools we need for our lab zero file on Ubuntu. Now I want to uh, stop this uh, web goat. Just close it. Set a web wolf.
where is that werewolf? I, I didn't uh, open this werewolf. Yeah, werewolf. Because of, I already closed the web code, so you can open it as you did on Windows. Oh, it's here. What's web code? Now we will go through these uh, lessons from A1 to A10, but I will skip those. We are going to practice this Thursday. Web code is a deliberately uh, insecure application that allows uh, interested developers just like you to test vulnerabilities commonly found in the Java-based applications that use common and popular open source components. So it's just a punch bag for boxes. Or you can consider it a scapegoat. This is the introduction. Web goat. Now web wolf. Here the web wolf is used uh, together with the web goat. Here you use web goat without starting web wolf for a lot of lessons. You can use a uh, web code independently. If you need to do an exercise with WebWolf, make sure it's running alongside web code. And the lessons where you can use WebWolf are marked with the following icon on top right in the assignment. Here there's an assignment. You will see this wolf on the top right in the assignment. Here it can be used to host a file, receive emails, land page for income requests. We just uh, went through this stuff, how to run it. Right? This is a uh, web wolf. Now here, this line it starts the application on port 9090 by default. If you didn't change this port number, click here to open web wolf. The first thing you need to do is log in with the uh, user with the user you registered on WebGoat. Here you click it, actually we we already opened it there. Here, the web wolf we already opened it there. Now go go back here. So web wolf Let's see whether we need to uh, do anything here. No, we don't need to do anything here. Click here to open web wolf is is the same as here. So you see a tick here means it's uh, completed. But here I didn't see this tick uh, here. Click uh, the general and refresh to see this introduction. Okay, this tick does not show up. Anyway, we already have this uh, web wolf open here, so we can close one of them. Now, learn the basics of HTTP. All websites they are passed through HTTP, and uh, the secure version is called HTTPS. And uh, in all these uh, lessons, we are practice the insecure version HTTP. HTTP uh, basics here and go through this uh, together. Concepts, goals, and how HTTP works. This lesson presents the basics for understanding the transfers of data between the browser and the web application and how to trap the requ request and the response with uh, HTTP proxy. We want to become the man in the middle. How could we do that? With this HTTP proxy, this ZAP, or that burp suite. The user should become familiar with the features of web code by manipulating the uh, browser buttons to view hints here and show hints. Right? To show hints. So, why are the, the hints? They didn't show, show up now. You can practice these uh, buttons by yourself. For example, here 
log out and so on. Here the, the next one is the next one is uh, report card. This one or this one. This one is the uh, information about web code. Here is the support email. Here you can see you hide this uh, table content. You can also reset lesson, then you can do it again. After you reset le lesson, you will not see those ticks, which means it will give you a fresh start. Here it goes. The user should, uh, we, want, we just complete this part, right? Show the HTTP request parameters, HTTP request cookies, the Java source code. And uh, you may also try use this one, that attack proxy for the first time. How HTTP works? Here usually we use a get and post to send a request to the server, and then the server will give feedback a response. This is a request or response line, a head section and the entity body. They follow the same general format for HTTP transactions. Each client request and server response has three parts. Request or response line, head section, entity body. These are the three parts. So you can uh, read it through by yourself. This. Now you click this arrow to the next page here. Try it. Enter your name in the input field below. Press go to submit. The server will accept the request. Reverse the input and display it back to the user. Illustrating the basics of handling an uh, HTTP request. Here you just follow this st stuff. Type go. Suddenly you can type anything. The server will accept the request. Here it says the server has reversed your name. It changes this uh, this go to this one, so you can type anything. It will reverse the word you submitted. Step three, the quiz. What type of the HTTP command did we to use for the lesson? For this lesson, a post or, go, or a get. What the uh, post or get? Which uh, was the magic number? So how could we find that? In this place, we, we, we didn't see anything, right? So how could we find it? And come to this uh, web wolf to have a look here, the incoming requests. Here you see some requests show up here. The web wolf, you see uh, what we received here. Did you see uh, anything here? This mess is a uh, get. You can read through this part. We want to know where this one is the one when we click that sum submit. Here is a response. In this re response, we didn't see uh, that reversed go here. And also, in this request, the request is get. But we didn't see that uh, go, we, we submitted. But it says the refollow 8080. This is our, it's our web goat, right? But we didn't see the data at all. This uh, head part here. You, you have head part response. Here it says deny. Okay, we don't have those stuff. You can. Uh, we don't know what what it is. 
So we can try again. Let's see. Type your name. You can type your first name. Click go. Now you see your name is reversed. And come here for a look. Did we receive any new requests? Just refresh. Income requests? No, it did. It uh, it didn't send to this place, right? Here the files, mailbox, income requests, but this uh, income request here for this uh, this one it does not send to this place. Usually we can find from here this uh, head part. How do we find the head information? Whether it's a uh, check here whether it's post or get and uh, what's the magic number we need to intercept here intercept uh, this uh, information how do we intercept it but uh, in this uh, class we still didn't see how to do that right go through this place we didn't see uh, how to do that Here it says we, we may use this one for the first time. We already installed it, but we we still need to go down to see how to do it. HTTP proxies here in this proxy zap proxy, then we can see how to configure filtering and uh, re replay requests and so on. Here with the burp, and we will practice only with the zap. We already know what's a proxy, a HTTP proxy, and the capabilities what you can use. Here, yeah, click next. Set up. How to set up? Download, start up, configure this uh, proxy to a free port number, for example, 8090, and start browser directly from ZAP. So, uh, open this ZAP. Top click, run it, and open. Start the browser directly from this tab. The tab is uh, the man in the middle between the browser and the server. And this port number, let's choose 8090. Uh, Why we chose 8090? 80 is uh, 8080 is uh, web code, 9090 is web wolf. So maybe this number is good to remember here. Remember my choice. Here, what do you want to do? We don't. Uh, I don't want to proceed this session after at this moment. So you can choose the one and, uh, to see what will happen. Okay, now we are inside this tab. Uh, here you see request response. Request response, and uh, we need to open the browser inside this place. You can see attackers, the so many uh, types, right? Open your error in browser, Chrome, Firefox, Safari, and so on. Here is a default contact context. This is uh, a website hosted by this uh, tab. We want to uh, find how to uh, set use it. Here we already configured and uh, start our browser from tab. Here is the set in browser. Everything is uh, disabled. So, which means some connection, uh, some configuration we, we still need to uh, set. Yeah, next step download, start, config. Here, choose no. Config the proxy support. Now, in the tools option from the menu. Local proxy on the left, here the local proxy, and so on, 8090. 
So we just follow this uh, guide. from tools options here tools options local proxy local proxies localhost 8090 here you can uh, compare with this uh, the settings in this uh, lesson right you can see uh, Please make sure you have the same settings. Here it looks uh, the same. Now, here, except this one. One two seven dot zero dot zero dot one. Yeah. Oops. Okay, click click here this part you need to check one field by one field to make sure it's identical okay I set it up now next page setting up the browser so that we click the browser button to be able here to be able to proxy here are the browsers and click them over there in the browser type this uh, web code then the man this tab is a seat in the middle here the browser we open the browser the those browsers it looks like when I need to make it a wider here make it wider now see the browser here. There's a uh, Firefox. Okay, on a Firefox here. Did I install a Firefox? See, I have a Chrome. I didn't install a Firefox yet. When you check this place, it uh, has a Firefox, Chrome, and. Uh, Safari, but I installed this uh, Chrome here. So how do I add those uh, browser into this list here? Uh, in the list, I only see this uh, Firefox. Right? Open the browser. You will choose the Quick Start tab and pre-config to uh, proxy through tab. When I click it, because I didn't install it, you will see nothing happen, and uh, it didn't say any errors. So we in uh, I think it's also in these uh, options to see the browsers. There we see. Uh, let's see whether any. First browser. And we didn't see any other place we can uh, search the browsers. Okay, now we need to install that uh, Firefox browser. This is uh, weird. If maybe I didn't find the place, so where I could open other browsers, right? We can check this menu to have a look. Uh, report tools. I think it's inside options, but inside option I didn't find it. So we may ask Google how to add a browser icon to its uh, toolbar. So let's install Firefox.
Another way we may set the proxy manually. Firefox is installed. Okay, I click it, it popped up. Well, I don't think it's popped up. And I click this one. It looks like maybe it's uh, popped up just uh, after installation. Let's close it and have a look. Here, uh, yeah, it's from that tab. When I click that tab, here it says automatically configured to proxy via this tab and uh, to ignore certificate warnings. The more effectively you explore your application, the better that we understand and be able to attack it. And those settings usually you can find from these uh, options. Here you type a proxy. Then you will see the proxy settings. It's a setup here, HG proxy for this one, the port number, SOC file. And if you scroll down, you can see uh, these stuff. Okay, you need to set like this. This is uh, set automatically by tap, right? So on this, uh, this Chrome, you can also find the proxy settings here in this uh, settings. You check proxy. Proxy, then you can see uh, open your computer proxy settings. Here, then you can use set. This is uh, used to set for the whole uh, here the computer's proxy settings. I want to set only for this uh, browser. We didn't see uh, any other place we can set the proxy only for the browser. It just to show this place, this proxy settings. So you may ask uh, Google to see how to set only for the Chrome browser instead of for, for the whole uh, computer. Here you can set for the whole computer. Okay, now it asks us to open this uh, web goat from this browser, right? From this browser, you check this uh, place. And you also see those uh, tra transactions are intercepted here. Let's check that uh, course here, the course. Now you open this one in the browser. We just uh, copy this uh, link address. In this Firefox, Control V. Login. And you can see, welcome to the dev part. There's uh, many uh, options and uh, the tutorials. So you can. Uh, Go through its website to learn more. Sites, stores, and so on. Continue to your target. Okay, you can also see something added here, which means all the traffic are intercepted by this uh, tab, so tab can't do anything. I think you noticed sometimes when you are at home, you watch some movie, you will see something pops up. It's likely you are the traffic is inserted or modified, inserted with those are advertised by some proxies because your traffic is go through your router, go through your internet service provider, then go to the server. Along that way. You don't know 
with uh, any uh, man in the middle. Change it your contents. Here you see these are added by the dead. They can modify anything. Now we continue this uh, general explanation. The proxies we just uh, come to page three, I think. Here, now we can complete this part. This one, what it is, so you should be, we should be able to see all those things from here because all the traffics, you will be able to see it in this tab. So we type name and click go. You get a email. Come here to try to find that uh, request. This is a website. We want to find that uh, request. Let's see what is that uh, request we just sent. So you can based on the timestamp, which one is the latest one. Right, this timestamp the water. Okay, the water uh, from top to bottom. So now we want to know which one is that we send out. Here there is a get web goat. You can see this stuff. We want to find that uh, name we just submitted. So where could we find it? something. Name, match this one, login. Maybe this is not a good idea. Email. Here you see email, there are lots of email here. Oops, this is semantic. This is what we want to find it. Here, the server has reversed your name, you man. It looks like it's this one. There's a post, right? Here you see is a post. Attack one, you man. Here's the post. And you check the contents, it says there is a, some uh, you go to next step is a post and what's the magic number. So how do we find that a magic number from this place? So let's uh, have a look. In some case you can try to show hint to see turn on show parameters or other features. Show parameters or other features. Do we find anything here? No. Okay. I think uh, this is the class. You can just go through the lessons and uh, follow those steps and uh, try to answer the quizzes inside each lesson. Once you are done, it will show a tick over there, which means uh, you complete that uh, lesson.